I am in the main comms room for my university halls of residence at the moment, which comprises several hundred rooms. And today I'm going to be giving you a bit of a tour of how this network operates and provides high speed internet access to all those students with all of their devices. Let's start off our tour with where the internet comes into the building from the internet service provider. And that comes in through this black fibre cable here from outdoors and then connects to the Tyco fibre splice box. And then out of that comes these two white fibre cables, one of which goes to each of the fibre modems or ONTs. And this ONT at the bottom here is the most active one. And you'll find out why in a moment, as you can see there. So these take the fiber in, are modems and effectively spit out an ethernet connection using normal category cable there. And then that passes its way across, up across the building, and then down into here. So it comes out as there, and these two network cables then effectively go into the comms rack, which I'll talk about in a moment. This is the main comms rack for the site. So I will start off talking about where the network comes in from the first ONT, which is the most active one. So that ONT connects through this cable here, through the route that I just spoke about, and then it connects to the rest of the site through there. And what this box is, it's a MicroTik router board, and it does firewall NAT routing and captive portal, as the label suggests. And there is the network activity across this network at the moment. And you can see it's got flashing LEDs there. So it's output to the rest of the site. So everyone, all the students here connect through effectively that network cable there, or almost all of the students. And that then passes across the top here and then goes down into a Cisco Catalyst 2960G, which is at the top here. So you can see that's flashing quite, quite brightly. So the blue cable coming out of this then connects essentially to a whole array of other Cisco 2960 switches. So the blue cable goes across and connects to this top switch and then the gray cable comes out of it which then connects to the switch below and then the cable comes out of the switch below which then connects to the one below that and so on for the switches here. So there's four network switches and all the network cables that come out of these switches then travel up their way through the enclosure and into the patch panel which then connects to the rooms as well as the wireless access points for this site. Now those of you who are observant will have noticed there's a fibre cable here so these fibres then go across the top and into a fibre panel here which then goes across to the other side of this site where it then comes across and down and effectively connects to another switch like this one, and then this, this switch on the other side then effectively connects to another whole bank of switches and then network cables and then another patch panel to then serve all the people on those site. The only difference in terms of the second site is obviously it's served over this fibre here so it doesn't have that connection there and it doesn't have the router board and so on. It's essentially just like another set of switches but connected over fibre rather than ethernet. The second ONT and the second fiber line, which I said wasn't very active, um, serves this XIXL router. And this router then serves a few people around this just for Wi-Fi. To do load balancing over two lines, the MicroTik router board needs a certain configuration at the ISP end, which isn't available yet. So we essentially need a NAT box between the second ONT and the router board. And while that XIXL router will obviously do network address translation, the IT contractor provider wants the setup to be a certain way, which is quite reasonable. So they will be sending something over so that we can effectively move the whole site over to be using both lines, both fiber lines, rather than just one of them because obviously from a performance standpoint, this whole network does serve several hundred users, like I say, so it would be quite useful to have twice as much internet incoming network capacity as we have currently, because like while the traffic going through there might not be very much at the moment, 
it's not it's only about 5 p.m at the moment so come 9 10 11 p.m there will be a massively higher amount of traffic going through this which does at the moment pretty much saturate the first ONT so obviously getting the second one will massively improve performance across this site. So thanks for watching this video about the comms room at this university student accommodation halls of residence. Um, I hope you've enjoyed looking at it certainly it was quite interesting for me to be able to explore this network a bit and I apologize for covering up various things a bit randomly but that's because obviously those the labels contain information that could be useful to someone with nefarious intentions perhaps although to be fair I think that's unlikely they're not they're not actually particularly useful to an external party really um, but yeah thanks again I hope to see you in the next one